Hey everyone, how's it going? Five Finger Shuffle, we are back here with another video, and today I want to talk to you about Lydica. Um, first of all, I left the puppy cam up in the right down in the corner there, uh, right above the donation bar and the, the follow bar because I thought it looked super adorable. Normally I turn that off when we do videos, but he was just laying there sleeping, so I thought I'd leave it. Um, anyway, uh, let's talk about Lydica. So Lydica just came out, she's in a new banner, and I got really lucky just now and pulled her. I was actually leveling up my my friendship level on my Guider Aether because I wanted the bonus summons in order to try and summon Luna. And I've been doing that all week, uh, scrambling to try and get as many summons as I could to hit the pity banner uh, mark. And But then I summoned Luna before the pity banner, before the pity limit, and so just today I hit the uh, level 10 on Guide Rither and I got four free summons from it. And the fourth one was Lydica. So I'm super, super hyped. Let's take a look at her kit really quick. Her first skill, attacks with a sword, decreasing combat readiness by 10%. If the enemy is already debuffed, the combat readiness doubles. So 20% combat readiness reduction or 10% with no debuff. And that's on your basic skill. Second skill, attacks all enemies with an 85% chance to decrease hit chance. And yes, that can be brought up to 100% if you skill her up. So decrease hit chance, um, really, really strong. I mean, and it's attack all enemies, which is really nice. So you can use this as an AOE. Or just, I mean, it's always going to be an AoE, but you can also use it to decrease hit chance, which is going to help your survivability a lot. Uh, I'm also going to go over some other places where I thought maybe this could be useful. And finally, attacks the enemy with a whip sword and decreases combat readiness by 100%, and decreases speed for two turns, grants a caster skill nullifier, negating damage received from the next skill attack. So this is a new mechanic and I haven't really had a chance to test it out because she's not ready yet. She's only five star and I literally just six starred Krau, so I don't even have food. Um, but it sounds like if she gets attacked, she's gonna take no damage. Um, I'm guessing they put that there, then worded it this way, instead of like invulnerability. This will, it can still take damage from ongoing damage and can still take damage from the arena penalty. So I'm kind of guessing that's why. Uh, this is on a five turn cooldown, can be skilled up to be on a four turn cooldown, which is actually quite nice. Uh, so four turn cooldown, plus the fact that it's, say you're only facing one unit, say it's her versus one average speed unit, maybe you're facing. I don't know. Let's say Destina. So you're, it's just the two of you, and Destina is constantly healing. So you would think that Destina would be able to solo Lydica eventually, but Lydica is going to come along, decrease speed one, which makes her much faster, um, which means we're going to get a lot more turns. But not only are we decreasing speed, but we're resetting the attack bar to zero, which means one, we're automatically going to be, we're both at zero at this point. Which means that since we're automatically faster and we have a, uh, they have a speed decrease and we have neither, uh, we're definitely going to get next turn. Next turn, skill one, and skill one reduces combat readiness hopefully by 20% at this point. Um, and we've landed a debuff, which is a speed debuff, so that means it will be 20% reduction. Hopefully we're fast enough and they're slow enough now that we can do this again. So you see where I'm going with this? Now we were taking three to three turns to their one, potentially even four, depending how fast you are and how slow they are. Um, and if you can get to four, then all of a sudden you've got this skill up again. You can do it all over again. So it's going to be really interesting to see kind of what happens with this. The thing that excites me more than her kit is her base stats. Let's go to six star awakening. Her base stats are insane. She has some of the best base stats in the entire game. 
Her, look at her base speed, 124 base speed. She, that makes her one of the fastest units in the entire game, automatically, as soon as you get her. She actually starts at 120, uh, 120 flat. When you awaken her, one of her awakenings is into speed. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, but also her base attack at 1,283. I believe that makes her the third highest base attack out of all the elemental nat fives in the game. I think the only ones that are higher, who were they? I was just looking at a couple. Um, I know Ludwig is one. Ludwig is really high. Yeah, he's got 14, 12. And there was somebody else that was, had crazy high base attack. It wasn't him, was it? No. Um, I know Vildred and Says, I believe, have the same. Maybe Sigrid? Nope, Sigrid's lower as well. Man, who was it? That's going to bother me now. There is somebody else that has like 1300 and something. Yeah, she is the same amount as well. Maybe it was Fire? Ball, Ravi, Haste, Lydica, Ken. Oh, it was Tenebria. That's who it was. So, in terms of base attack, it goes Ludwig, then Tenebria, and then a bunch of people, including Lydica, uh, in terms of the third highest base attack in the game. Add that to the third highest uh base speed well i don't know what what number she is on the base speed we'd have to check out my base speed video that i put out a while back um, but she also has one of the highest base speeds in the game now her attack isn't based on speed so that she, because you're probably going to build her fast she won't do crazy damage uh in compared to those people but i do want to show you guys something let's switch to the team i was using with her if I can find it. This one. So I thought this was interesting. This has nothing to do with how good she is, but look at her sword right now. It's kind of draped over. When she goes to lift it up, it completely like locks into place and turns into a sword. So it's not actually a whip she has, but it's her sword that turns into a whip, which is kind of interesting. Um, anyway. Completely unrelated to how good she is. Now, keep in mind that I haven't had a chance to test her yet. I've just been leveling her up since getting her. So here she is. I have her on a weird build right now. This is all leftover gear, so that's why she's kind of all over the place. Uh, but I'm going to make her super fast. Obviously, her boots are only plus three. Nothing's upgraded. Uh, I was just using it to level her. So when I first got her, I was thinking about building her as more of a support on Bloodstone, bringing her into things like Raid. So in Raid, especially... So like today, I was having an issue. Uh, I wanted to kill the Queen in Raid, and then I wanted to come over and kill the boss on the top right-hand corner. But in order to kill that one, you need an AoE, and normally against the Queen, I just bring single target. So I needed someone with an AoE. I ended up bringing Cecilia, who did the job. She was great. Um, I would have brought in Bellina, but Bellina has element disadvantage against that top right boss. Um, so I got this girl and I was like, oh my god, that's perfect. I can put her in there. She can slow the boss, she can reset the boss. Um, and she happens to have that AoE with her second skill, which also decreases hit chance. Not only is that going to be amazing for that boss on normal raid, but she's going to be incredible for that boss on hell raid as well, which I haven't been able to beat yet. Because she's going to be able to stop that boss from doing anything. She can basically lock that boss down, which is going to be crazy. Um, I'm super excited about that. And hopefully it will give me a way to clear that boss as well. So I'm probably going to end up changing this. Um, what I might do is these two defense base pieces. This one's effectiveness, which is weird. Um, I do want her to land her stuff. So I might even leave this on her. Just because it does have speed, defense, crit rate, crit damage. So I might go speed, effectiveness, and then put attack on this top slot if I can get a good attack piece for here. So that could be interesting. I was actually... 
there, I do have a piece that I want to try. It's only level 57, but it's got the substats I want. They're just not very good. Uh, speed, crit chance, and an HP. Ideally, that attack would be attack percent, but I kind of want to try her like this. And I have a crazy set of speed boots on my Shuri, who I was thinking about six-starring next, or as one of my next ones. These here, uh, with crit rate, crit damage on them. So I might switch those over to her and then build her first, since I can use her. She'll be more effective in that slot, and I feel like I'll probably use her more. So let's take a look at her awakening really fast. First one is attack. Second one is attack. Third one gives her the extra 10% on her base skill if you, the enemy is debuffed. Yeah, is that the fourth one? No, this is the fourth one. Fourth one is that 4% speed, uh, relatively easy. Now the fifth one, if you've been doing the event, you've been getting tons of these things. I'm already up to 14. There's another event with the same catalyst next week, which means you will have enough to awaken her if you're doing the event, uh, but that's another 6% attack. And then her sixth awakening is another 6% attack. So she has four of these that add attack, 3%, that adds up to six, plus six is 12, plus six is 18% more attack just from awakening. Um, in order to make her hit hard, you're really going to have to gear her well, but I think she has the potential to do some pretty good damage. I haven't really been able to test it out, but it, she could be pretty crazy. In terms of artifacts, I do have Bloodstone on her currently, but honestly, there's a bunch of different options. Um, I don't mind Infinity Basket, to be honest with you. Depending on what kind of comp you're running her with, that could be really good. Um, increasing combat readiness of all allies by 8.8% when the enemy is defeated. I don't really like this one, to be honest with you. If it would be better if it was on her. If you want to run her as more of a support, um, you could run this. Although it would help her attack as well, to be honest. You could run it on either way. Uh, if you're going to use it against bosses, then the target buff or debuff might be really nice. And it would also... Um, also help with her first skill to make sure the enemy is always debuffed. So those are the options that I would look at in terms of what I have there. I also have a couple... Um, what I think might be really good is this one, Rosa Hargana. Increasing dual attack chance. So she could potentially decrease the enemy's attack bar when it's not even her turn, which could be crazy OP. Let me see if I have any others in here. Who do I, what do I have on Bella now? Oh, same thing. All right, so um, yeah, I think Rosa Hargana is probably your go-to because I think that would be crazy strong. I might end up switching that now that I've kind of played around with her. Let's go look at what her skills look like and then I'll tell you where I think she's going to be useful and how I'm going to use her. The first one, of course, is going to be... My journal, wrong place. First one, of course, is going to be Raid. I think she's going to be crazy for Raid. She's going to lock down all bosses. Um, obviously, you can't use her in Wyvern, immune to attack bar reduction. But you could probably use her in Golem. I don't think in Golem there's anything that says that. Um... But all raid, if you get her early, you could use her in Abyss. That would be really, really strong. I'm sure, uh, rumors have it, there's going to be... That is not the right person. Hold on. Rumors have it, there's going to be another 10 Abyss levels. So for those of you that are done Abyss, she still could be crazy for Abyss. As for PvP... You can't close your eyes. I've been trying to think of ways I could utilize her in PvP, and it's going to depend on her damage, which we haven't really been, well, I haven't been able to test yet. Where did she go? There we go, Lydica. So let's go preview skills. Who will stand against me? 
So here comes the first skill. This is the attack bar reduction. Great animations. I do love her animations. Is it time to draw my sword? Here's the AoE. Time to prove my might. So I'm sure you guys recognize that Make my day. from uh, from doing the event over and over last week. And finally, the most important one. Say these two have already got their hit chance. Let's try and reduce the attack bar of this guy and slow. Time to bring this fight to an end. Such a cool animation. Her animations are awesome. Let's do that again. Eternal sleep. Only by the will of the goddess. Her voiceovers are pretty good too, actually. I like her. Anyway, um, oh, and what's her burn? That's a good question. I don't even know what that is. Ignores resistance on the decrease hit chance. So you can do that and you get the guaranteed chance to decrease hit chance on everybody. Could be really strong again. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I think if we had to rate her um, for PvP, you can make her super fast and get her to get one of the first turns before the enemy because her base speed is so fast and you could lock somebody down right out of the gate. Um, I wish that decreased resistance was on the third skill. Or, sorry, irresistible was on the third skill with burn. I think that would be much stronger. But I guess that's why it's not there. You could potentially, I mean, if you wanted to, uh, you could potentially do that first if you thought that was important, if you were worried about that. Uh, personally, I would probably pick one unit to lock down. So, she is fire, but you could try and, for example, lock down Dian. Stop, try and stop Dian from doing her her nonsense at the beginning of a fight. That could be really strong. Uh, if you're worried about Clurry, you could lock down Clurry early. Uh, if you could lock down Shadow Rose, all these guys, you could just be like, okay. We're going to go first, and we're going to stop you from doing what you normally do. So, uh, I really like her. I think she's going to be amazing. In terms of PvP, I don't know the exact application, so I'm not going to give her a rating there. But overall, I mean, she's got to be one of the most hype units in the game right now. I think she's got to be, I don't know, a 9 out of 10 in terms of how good she's going to be. So, if you got her, congratulations. Uh, if you haven't yet, the banner will be up for quite a while still. Uh, for sure, just remember, she is not a limited banner. So, if you don't have Luna yet, keep summoning the Luna banner. Make sure you get your Luna first. Uh, Lydica will make it into the normal summons eventually, and hopefully you can pull her then. Um, or you can get her next week when the Luna banner is gone. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck on your summons, and we will see you all next time. Bye for now.